welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today I'm going to take you through how to calculate a Best Buy. In this video you are going to find out what a Best Buy is and why you would want to learn about it. We're going to talk about the unit cost or the unitary method. We're going to look at a couple of worked examples and then I'll tell you about what's coming up in our future videos. This video series is aimed at students in grade 7 to 9. In fact Best Buys is part of the Australian curriculum for all students in year 7 and 8 and then it's consolidated as part of a rates and ratios unit in grade 9. You'll also come across Best Buys if you are studying grade 11 in a variety of maths right across Australia. General maths, essential maths, foundation maths, you can see it all on the screen. I'm not going to read it all to you. And lastly, this is something that adults will find interesting as well. This is a life skill, being able to calculate a Best Buy. In recent times, Australia's economy experienced its first recession in almost 30 years. What this means for everyday Australians is higher unemployment and greater difficulty for individuals and families to ensure that bills can be paid. On average, most households in Australia spend about $250 a week on groceries. That's about $13,000 a year. It's estimated that this is about 5 to 15% of people's income. What this means is that if people can shop in a smart way, especially on their groceries, then they'll potentially be able to save a great deal of money leaving more of their income to cover other bills and needs. One way that people can achieve this is to compare prices of one brand or size against another and purchase the brand or size that offers the best value for money. This can be challenging, especially when there are so many brands and sizes to compare. Have you ever wondered why companies like Coca-Cola produce the same product in so many different sizes? Part of this is to offer customers convenience, but this also enables a manufacturer to dominate a larger section of the grocery aisle. New sizes also enable a company to compete on price against other brands. For example, consider the pasta sauce category. Most pasta sauces are sold in 500 gram bottles, but if a manufacturer was able to introduce a 450 gram bottle with a slightly lower price than the 500 gram bottle, customers might not notice the difference in size, but be lured by the cheaper price. A smart customer is aware of these tricks of the trade and is able to make comparisons of one brand or size to another using the unitary method. This is a mathematical method that changes prices for a range of sizes into one standard size to enable an easy comparison. Typically, both products will have their prices recalculated to a price per gram or per 100 grams or per kilo. In the year 2000, mandatory ticketing regulations were introduced into Australian grocery stores to enable customers to see the unitary price of all products. This certainly helps everyday Australians to make the most economical choice while in store, although many people are simply not aware that this is on display for them. Savvy consumers on a tight budget will often plan their shopping before going to the grocery store by making a list that they will stick to and by comparing the so-called junk mail catalogues. These clever shoppers then take the time to shop between stores, picking the best buy from among the various retailers. Unfortunately, advertising catalogues don't always calculate the best buy for you, so it is really important that you can do this for yourself. We're now going to do one of two worked examples. Calculate the price of 100 grams if a 1.2 kilo box of cereal costs $8.50. We're actually just using the unitary method in this question. We've just been introduced to you. Now I'm going to show you how it works. Sometimes you'll see the price per 100 grams or calculate the price per kilogram, for example. The word per simply means for every, and you've seen that in the word percentage, for every 100. We're kind of calculating a bit of a percentage here by calculating the price of 100 grams. And you'll see in our final answer, we're actually going to use the word per or use a slash which indicates per. You've seen that in things like kilometers per hour. Okay, let's start. Step one, we're going to convert that original weight into grams. Now you might be wondering why would I do that? I've got to find the price of 100 grams. So therefore I've got to turn the kilos into grams first. That's my very first step. So we know that there are 1000 grams in one kilogram. And therefore, to go from kilograms to grams, we're going to multiply that um, weight of 1.2 kilos by 1,000. So let's do it. 1.2 kilos multiplied by 1,000 gives us 1,200 grams. A lot of you could probably do that in your head, but I'm just showing you the conversion there for full working. Okay, our next step is we now need to find the cost of one gram. So this is what is called our unitary cost, one gram. It's always easier to take things back to one grams and then up to the amount we're looking to find. So we know that there are 1,200 grams 
And so we're going to divide $8.50 by 1,200. And that will give us a very, very small price per gram. It's not even a cent. Okay, so now what we're going to do in our final step here, we're going to calculate the price for 100 grams or per 100 grams. We take that price of 0 0.00783 and we multiply that by 100 because we've taken it down to 1 and now up to 100. And it gives us the price of 0 0.7083 dollars per 100 grams. Now we can't leave our answer right there yet. We need to round appropriately. Money has two decimal places. So we're going to write a statement at the end. The price is 71 cents per 100 grams or dollar sign 0 0.71 dollars per 100 grams. So it's very important though when you do step four that you don't just jump from step two to four and then just write your final answer. Your teacher's going to want to see that you've got all of the rounded numbers there first, 0 0.7083, and then we round it off in our final step when we give our statement. Now that can become very important when we're comparing two products to one another because sometimes the difference between those two products is right down in those cents. And if we round it off too early, then there'll be no difference that we can compare. So that's why it's important not to round before our final step. Let's kick off with our second and last worked example today. Collar is sold in two different sizes. Which collar size is the best to buy? We've got a two litre bottle for $2.85 or 10 275 ml cans for $7.60. So we need to work out which choice should we make to save the most money. Well, firstly, we're gonna make sure that both things are being compared in the same sizes. One of them's in liters, one's in milliliters, and there's lots of them. So we need to convert the total quantities into milliliters so we can make a comparison. So I've done this in a table. It's a really good idea to set your working out in a table or some sort of columns or with subheadings or something like that that will actually show your teacher what you're working on. I often see students when they're comparing Best Buys just put information everywhere. It's best to keep it organized, really easy to work out what you're doing. So on the first column, we've got the two litre bottle. We're gonna multiply that by 1000 milliliters to convert that from liters to mils, 2000 milliliters. On the right hand column, we've got the 10 cans. So we're gonna do 10 times 275 and we get 2750 milliliters. So straight away, we've got two different quantities that we need to compare. In our second step, we're now gonna calculate the price per milliliter. So what that means is we're actually gonna divide the price by how many milliliters there are. And you can see that it's very small amount, that price per milliliter, less than a cent. And I've produced that information there and I've got the slash, which means per milliliter, it's a rate. In our third step, we can simply compare that now by writing a statement. The two liter bottle is obviously better value for money because it is cheaper per milliliter than the 10 can pack. However, you may wish to take this a little step further and change it back to liters to make the comparison much easier. And I'll show you why this is gonna be a good way to do this, because if we're wanting to work out what the difference is in price between the two, it becomes a very, very, very small number because it's already less than one cent. So it makes it easier then to boost this back up into liters to make that comparison so we can work out how much cheaper it is to buy the two liter bottle. So firstly, I'm gonna multiply each of these final amounts, the prices by a thousand to go back from milliliters to liters. And now I've got the two liter bottle, it's $1.43 approximately per liter, and the cans are $2.76 per liter. So now it's gonna be much easier for me to calculate the difference and write that in a statement. You'll notice this statement that I've written here does give a lot more information. The two liter bottle is better for value for money because it is $1.43 per liter. Notice I've rounded that to two decimal places because money has cents, so cents are in two decimal places, compared to $2.76 per litre. It is in fact $1.33 per litre cheaper to buy the bottle than the cans. So you can see that last sentence that I've put there creates that extra bit of analysis. So if you're doing a business assignment or a maths assignment, or you'll notice that the question in your exam has a lot of marks attached to it, doing that little extra step of converting back to litres working at the difference could be all it takes to get you those little extra marks. Well, that's all we have time for today. We've still got a lot of videos coming up in this series, so do stay tuned. Then we've got simple interest, wages and salaries, budgets, and all the way down to exchange rates and dividends. It's gonna be quite exciting, whether you're a math student or a business student, or just an interested adult wanting to learn a little bit more about consumer maths. 
I'd like to say a big shout out to all of our new subscribers. We've had loads over the last week. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you're really enjoying what we're putting here on the channel. And if you're wanting to subscribe, just hit that notifications button and that way you'll know whenever we've got new videos or you could follow us on Facebook. On Facebook, we often have a Friday funny or a throwback Thursday, just something to add a little bit more interest to your day. Thank you so much for joining me here at McClutchy Mass. It's always a pleasure to have you. Big shout out to David and Zach McClutchy for helping out with the video. And our sources are below if you're wanting to read a little bit more about Australia's recession in 2020 or a little bit more about how households spend their money. Thank you so much again. Have a wonderful day.